Hey everybody, it's Kenji. Uh, I am continuing my Seattle teriyaki tour. This is stop nine, Yoshino Teriyaki. Um, I'm actually on my way to an event uh, with Eric Kim, the writer, the author of Korean American at Town Hall. Um, and so I am bringing him some of this teriyaki to taste. Um, so we will taste it together there. Um, all right, I am on my way to Town Hall now. Uh, this place, Yoshino, people have been telling me to come here, so I'm hoping for good things. Uh, and uh, yeah, this will be our first my first uh, tasting where I have someone joining me and also my first one with a, you know, a live studio audience. <laughs> this event, by the way, is part of a lecture series I'm doing with uh, Seattle Arts and Lectures. Uh, so Eric Kim is my second guest here and we're going to be talking about his book, Korean American, and also, you know, what it means to be a Korean American. We'll be talking about the writing process and the recipe development process. Um, I've got one more in the series coming up. It's going to be with Pai, Pai Lin from uh, uh, hot Thai chicken, hot Thai kitchen, not hot Thai chicken, uh, hot Thai kitchen if you know her. Um, I will leave a link to my link tree where you can find uh, that event listed if you want to come to another live event. All right. And is it recording? Yeah. Okay. All right. Um, so teriyaki sets, I don't know if you're familiar with them, but teriyaki sets, they come with rice, uh, white rice, uh, grilled chicken, <laughs> usually thigh, uh, with teriyaki sauce, and then uh, a salad. Usually it's like chopped iceberg with a few shreds of carrot. Kind of sweet it's amazing. I haven't had dinner yet. So. Okay. <laughs> this is an interesting looking one. <laughs> um, so they've got right. So they've got cabbage instead of the instead of the typical iceberg. <laughs> the, the chicken is kind of looks like it was kind of pre-chopped and then picked up with tongs and thrown into a pile here. But that might also be because I, I brought it over here on a bike, so maybe that. Maybe that. Are your controls? Have you been dipping or saucing? Uh, I, I generally eat a bite first and then and then I will dip if there is additional sauce. That one looks like there is additional sauce. So. Yeah, and, and you know, I, I eat it as a normal person would, where it feels like if it needs more sauce, I'll add more sauce. Mmm. Is it juicy? <laughs> Is that a criteria for you? Juiciness? Uh, is rice part of the criteria? Is this really exciting for everybody? <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, yeah, I forgot you guys are. You know, I think the rice is probably an important criteria, right? Like, mm -hmm. not the rice. You don't just eat teriyaki raw dog. Like, no, the rice is important. <laughs> and then the, the rice is one of the things that has the most variation. You know? Right, right. Oh. That's good rice, though. Like it's this. a pretty good rice, yeah. yeah. Not, it's not overcooked. How do you feel about Seattle teriyaki? As a, can you imagine it as a, as a, as a institution? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, I've been following, so I... Okay. <laughs> but I definitely, you made me realize that I, take, I totally have taken it for granted my whole life, you know? It's something that, in Atlanta anyway, all the Japanese restaurants are owned by Korean people. Mm -hmm. So... Here, here too. <laughs> right? Oh. <laughs> so inher inherently everything has like, um, some, kind of like a boogie vibe sometimes. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. But you know, like a, a proper teriyaki, it's like, I, I, love, I love getting it at my favorite sushi restaurant in Atlanta, which is called Sushi Yoko. All right, everyone, uh, that was last night. Today is the next day. It's a beautiful sunny day here in Seattle, uh, which we have quite a few of, despite our reputation. Uh, but it's a beautiful day for a bike ride. Since the taste test we did last night was pretty unfair to the restaurant, um, you know, the chicken was half an hour old, it was jostled around on a bike, um, I wanted to come back and give it another shot to make sure that I give it a fair shake. So I am biking back to Yoshino. Uh, I'll be there in a couple minutes, and I will taste the exact same things again, hot and fresh, and uh, let you know what I think. Alrighty, that was real fast. Because you come to teriyaki places at lunchtime, you know, they got chicken just going, just firing because they got a line of people waiting for it. Uh, so it's always going to come out hot and fresh. Let's see how it looks today. So they did have a gyoza combo. Uh, you just have to kind of search for it. They don't make it obvious on the menu. Okay, so I didn't actually do much jostling of the chicken. The chicken just comes this way at this place. The bike ride did not really change the... Um, the appearance of it compared to yesterday. The chicken itself, a bit of a mess, obviously like chopped into a pile and uh, and, pot and then just stuck onto here, kind of, you know, Adam Ragusea steak style. It looks like it's just kind of mixed into the sauce, but a decent amount of char though. It looks reasonably juicy. All right, let's give it a taste. No, not super juicy. Not a ton of flavor. I don't know, not too crazy about it. It's cheap. I guess there's that. Some of these little edge bits are good. You know, as I always say with these places, even you know, even the sort of run-of-the-mill ones, like this one's pretty run-of-the-mill to me. Although the, the place, I like the look of it. It's like an old-school looking place. Um, looks like it's seen some years on it. But um, even for the kind of run-of-the-mill flavor, flavor-wise, it's still good, you know. 
tastes good. <laughs> if I was in the area and I got this for lunch, I'd be happy. Let's move on to the rice. This looks pretty good, actually. Nice separate grains. Not mushy at all. Hmm. It does have a, um, you know, they put a ladle of sauce on here afterwards and that sauce kind of soaks into the rice, which is nice. That sauce actually, they, they sell the sauce by the, they, you can buy like a gallon of the sauce here, I think, or you can buy containers of it. And the sauce actually is the best part of it so far. It's very, um, not very sweet at all, which is good. N nice and savory. It does have a bit of a raw soy sauce flavor to it, like it's not reduced too much, but... Hmm. Sauce is quite good. All right, let's move on to the cabbage situation here. So this is different from the normal iceberg or romaine salad. What does it taste like? Hmm. Now that is good. Vinegary. A little sweet. Nice and crunchy. It tastes almost not quite like a slaw, but almost like almost like halfway between a slaw and a sauerkraut, like pickled. Hmm. Maybe that's the secret here. That, that slaw is that slaw seems like the uh, the Yoshino special sauce. Mm, yeah, eaten together with the chicken. Okay. Mm -hmm. So if you want to get kind of the ideal bite here, take some chicken, take some rice, and some of the cabbage. That combination of all three together. Hmm, that's good. All right, I think I'd start. I, I think I get why people recommend this place, and I get why the audience last night at our event, when we mentioned this slaw, so many people cheered, which I've, I've never heard anybody cheer for cat for a cabbage before, but there was a whole room full of people cheering for cabbage, um, and I guess this is cabbage worth cheering about. All right, let's move on to the dumplings. Now. So these are the thing I'm kind of least excited about. They kind of they look like frozen dumplings that were simply boiled. Uh, they've got holes in them. They've got some they've got some freezer burn on them. Well, let's see. Well, the dumplings are, they're kind of hidden on the menu and there's no reason to seek them out. Okay, Yoshino Teriyaki, if you come here, I did see a lot of people ordering the spicy chicken. That might also be the move here, but if you're gonna get the regular teriyaki, make sure to eat it with the cabbage slaw and the rice all together, not just the chicken on its own. The chicken on its own, so-so, together with the cabbage. Very good. All right, guys, gals, non-binary pals, I'll see you in the next one. Bye-bye. Oh, for my soda subplot today, it's Dr. Pepper Zero. Someone in my comments yesterday asked me if I'd ever had Dr. Pepper Zero. I had not only never had it, I'd never heard of it. I didn't know they made this, but I walked in here today and they had it, so I tried it. Uh, this one... If anything, it tastes like... It tastes more like Dr. Pepper than regular Dr. Pepper. I don't know. I like it. This might become my go-to uh, Dr. Pepper drink of choice. Dr. Pepper style of choice, zero. Okay. <laughs> All right, see you later. Oh, yeah, yeah. Wow, how much was that bad boy?